Warning, this review may contain spoilers, strong language, violence, and content of a graphic nature. It may not be suitable for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, welcome to another Trick or Treat Horror Fest. I'm your host, DJ Surreal with Descent Sundays. Uh, today we're actually going to be talking about Purge Anarchy, which is actually the sequel to The Purge. So this sequel addresses a lot of the things that we kind of wanted to see in the first one. Um, it's instead of focusing on one family for the night, you actually meet several characters who end up grouping together because they all get stuck outside for one reason or another. And there's lots of different things going on and there's lots of different storylines. And in this one, you actually see more, more than just the murder. This one is actually about financial gain. The theme of this one is about financial gain more than murder. Murder is definitely happening, but instead of people going out and stealing other people's shit, they're actually capturing people who are too poor to have um, good security systems or good um, like safety equipment, basically, I guess. And they're selling them to the rich for, for murder, which is kind of, you know, kind of a weird thing. But hey, you know, at least they're addressing that whole financial gain aspect. And let's face it, especially in a, in a, in a country like America, you know, capitalism is kind of a big thing. So um, we also had the, an interesting idea of uh, the poor voluntarily martyring themselves for the, for the benefit of their family to the rich, who then pay their family a, a substantial sum. Um, I also thought that was kind of a, an interesting idea, and I like that they brought it in. Um, and then the third sort of thing that they're throwing around, um, third storyline they're throwing around there was the idea that not enough people are actually going out and purging and participating. So the government is actually making certain strikes on particular buildings to eliminate people with less wealth. Um, also kind of an interesting uh, political agenda thing and also fuels into, into the idea um, of the general politics of the purge. There's a couple of questions I still have that weren't addressed by this movie or the first movie. And this, this movie brought it up a little bit more for me in the sense that, you know, there's, it's, it's a grander scope and you see more of a city uh, on the whole instead of one particular family. But one of the questions I always had about, you know, this movie is what happens to people who don't live in the States um, when purge time happens, like tourists and stuff? Are people allowed to come in and participate in the purge? Um, you know, what happens if a tourist is murdered and they're not actually a citizen of that company? Of that country is does it make a difference if you sign a waiver like what's what's the deal um also you have to wonder about immigration of people leaving are people allowed to leave and what that would look like you know and why don't more people just leave if they don't want to participate um this movie had some interesting interesting characters um they you sort of get introduced to a whole uh, underground movement that are completely against the purge. Personally, I would have liked to see that played up a little bit more. I thought that was really interesting and it kind of was downplayed in the movie. Um, you sort of see it here, you see it there, and then it's, you move on, right? Uh, one of the characters that you actually um, get to meet again is actually the the nameless army guy from the first movie that the, the family rescues. He turns up with the resistance. Now, they don't actually acknowledge that, they don't actually name it, but it is the same actor. And uh, if you go, if you go on IMDb, he is credited as, as the same character, which I thought was kind of interesting, and it's a very like in passing, subtle kind of thing. Um, one thing I, that really bugged me about this movie is that so you have this group of survivors that are stuck out stuck outside, and they end up getting help, being rescued by one guy who's gone out to purge, and he's gone out to purge to avenge the death of his son. And he's very angry and, you know, they set up this whole thing with, you know, his wife, his, sorry, pardon me, his ex-wife telling him not to go out and participate, but he's like, whatever, I need to do what I need to do. And so he's gone out to purge to find this guy and he ends up coming across this group of survivors and he helps them and he rescues them and he takes them through the city to a safe place. 
Um, now the whole time the survivors are like, oh yay, you know, please help us, thank you so much for helping us, and they don't say anything about all the people that he kills in order to save them. But the minute they get to a safe place and he's like, okay, I gotta go take care of my business, I gotta go avenge my son, they're extremely hypocritical in the sense of, you don't need to kill, don't do that, don't participate in the purge. I sort of understand in the sense that, yeah, okay, you know, he is choosing to actively um, be a part of something that they don't agree with. But at the same time, he just killed like a lot of people. I don't really count how many, but it felt like, I don't know, at least 10 or 20 people in order to save your ass. And yet you're telling him not to go do this kind of a hypocritical thing. I understand it's a human nature thing, but it just, it was one of those things that really bothered me. The fact that they were so fucking high and mighty about it. And you're just like, dude, he just killed a bunch of people to save you. And you didn't say anything about that, you hypocrite. Um, I like the, I like this movie. Uh, I think there was a lot more interesting things going on, um, be just because it was on a larger scale. Uh, that being said, I think I actually still prefer the first one. Um, just because there's, you can really get into the characters. Uh, this With this particular movie, um, The Purge Anarchy, there's less time spent with each character storyline, so it just feels like a lot more random events happening and less like actual character development. Um, especially when the overall movie doesn't really have a lot of plot. Like there's a lot of subplots, but not not really a cohesive full story that they're telling aside from these survivors trying to stay alive this one night. Um, so I don't know, I just didn't really find that super original. Anyway, so that's my take on The Purge Anarchy. Um, thank you for joining us for another Trick or Treat Horror Fest movie review. And be sure to check back for tomorrow for another great review. Have a good night.